Here's a current depiction using satellite data of the oceans, specifically the Pacific Ocean, and it shows the El Nino region on the bottom of the screen is still in a strong phase. Also shows very warm waters continue off the eastern Pacific all the way up to the California coast and especially the Baja California Mexico region. Very warm El Nino waters continue as shown here. How much precipitation did we get this year so far and we'll compare it to two other strong El Nino years for reference. Well up to date in San Diego we've only received 6.83 inches of rain for this water year that begins on October 1st. You can see Santa Ana and Riverside have received less amounts. Now it is noteworthy that in strong El Nino years, at least prior ones, we have seen significant rainfall at least between one and two inches of rain in the month of April. But it's also important to note that February and March tend to be the wettest months and especially February this year in this current El Nino did not deliver. Let's take a look at our precipitation deficits that are ongoing. Here I take a look at Santa Ana in Orange County since 2011. That area has received 36 inches of rain However, their deficit is a whopping 39.37 inches of rain. In other words, it's a basically about three seasons of precipitation missed since 2011. Here are some other sites for reference, including San Diego, where we've received 42 inches of rain, just under 43. Our total deficit is about 14 inches of rain since 2011. For this one year alone, 2015 and 16, we've had 6.83, which is about 66% of our annual water year average. So in our region, we're missing about a season and a half. You can see for comparison, the Santa Ana region in Orange County is worse off. Mountain regions also missing significant precipitation, but closer to a season to a season and a half. Let's take a look at those mountain and desert regions. You can see Idlewild, Big Bear, and Palomar on this map. We highlighted Palomar where we have received some big rainfall in El Nino years, such as 82, 83, 97, 98. Not this year. We can see that Palomar Mountain has received just under 15 inches of rain. Normally, in an average year, they should have received a little over 21 inches of rain. And for comparison, we show some El Nino years that were very wet and also some marches during El Nino years that were very wet. All right, let's take a look at a perspective across the entire West. Percent of normal precipitation for this water year, October 1 through late March. You can see Southern California is in the orange shading that indicates 50 to 70 percent of normal. Some areas even less than 50 percent of normal in parts of LA and Orange County. Good news here is Northern and Central California those areas are almost all in the green and even some blue shading which is above normal precipitation rain and snow. In the month of March and late February, going back the past 30 days, you can see the weather pattern clearly has been active across Northern California and the Pacific Northwest, an ongoing pattern that we've seen most of this winter, and very little precipitation, quite dry, especially compared to normal across the desert Southwest, including Southern California. This is just the past 30 days compared to normal. Here's a zoomed up version since October 1st. You can see our region is in the yellow and the orange shading. Some of our mountain areas have been closer to normal, but for the most part, the region is significantly behind in precipitation, more in the 50 to 75% of normal. Temperature wise, we continue to be warm after a record breaking February in terms of warmth. You can see going back to the start of the water year, October 1st, that temperatures have departed by several degrees above normal, two to five degrees above normal, especially along the coastal regions of California, thanks to the warm waters, but also across the northern Rockies, as shown here.
thanks to the weather pattern not allowing cold air to come down. The biggest impacts of this El Nino certainly will go down in the books as wind damage. We had several wind events across our region and some of you may experience some of this wind damage. In case of the January 31st wind event, it was a 1 in 15 year type wind event, mainly impacting San Diego County. This event here is shown for the early January 2016 localized wind damage from thunderstorms. All right, here is some good news. The water supply has taken a big jump even since the middle of this winter. Thanks to recent precipitation, reservoirs, the large ones in Northern California, are now above average for the date. And in fact, they are 70 to 85% of capacity. So that's great news that even in Central, but especially Northern California, where the primary track of storms have been going in this El Nino, has significantly increased our water supply. Let's take a look at that precipitation. Here we take a look at eight points that are most representative of precipitation and water supply, especially for Northern California. And we can see that that region is running quite a bit above normal and has now already exceeded its annual average. It's currently now at 52 inches. So this is an average of eight different stations in the Northern Sierra Nevada. Great measurement of how much water has landed in that region and potentially has gone into the reservoirs as you saw in the prior map. Down here in Southern California, not so good news. Our local water supply has not increased and in some cases decreased. We have circled on here the Diamond Valley Reservoir in Temecula, the largest reservoir in our region, is only 37% full. In fact, it's at a record low. Uh, that reservoir does get local water supply, water supply from the Colorado, and also water supply from the California Aqueduct, uh, which comes from the Sierra Nevada. Where have the storms been? This is an analysis of December through March showing that storms in response to the current El Nino conditions in the tropical oceans have been very active and strong and persistent. However, they've been located across 40 north in latitude and moving across 45 north in the Pacific Northwest as shown here. Our region has been dominated by the flip side of the storms or what we call the ridge of high pressure. We do not believe this ridge of high pressure comes from the ocean however. Tropical ocean conditions can drive the atmosphere. Typically the cooler waters of the northern and central Pacific do not drive the weather pattern. In fact the weather pattern itself is to blame and we're not quite sure why the pattern has not responded to the El Nino conditions in the tropics. But one of the biggest theories is that because the ocean water in the tropics that we showed earlier has not extended all the way to the South America coast, that this has allowed that ridge that you see on there be more prevalent, be more persistently in place, making a world of difference of where the storms go, basically to our north. Here's another look at it. This is jet stream level. You can see when you analyze every single day over the past few months, not only has there been a strong jet stream, but it has been persistently from the western and central Pacific towards northern California and basically split over us with a subtropical jet along the east coast and the extended Pacific jet. We do expect this exact pattern in strong El Ninos, except in the past it wasn't located at 35 to 40 north, it was located between 30 and 35 north, which makes a big difference in where you get your rain. Here's a look at how it departed from normal. And so this tells us that we can see jet stream wise, it was unusually strong and persistent much more than even a normal average winter across the western and especially the central Pacific, just north of Hawaii. And no coincidence why some of the major swells have been persistent across Hawaii. And no coincidence that Northern California has done so well and is now above normal with rain and snow thanks to that arrow we call the jet stream. That's where your storms lined up, further north than expected. Here's a comparison of past years to see what we're referring to. Upper left is 1983 El Nino. 
you can see it was directly pointed the unusually strong jet stream was directly pointed into central Southern California 97 98 also the same a little bit different orientation but the same pointed towards central and Southern California 2016 well as we showed earlier it was barely reaching us so we had long breaks of precipitation free periods or other words ridge of high pressure every storm has a ridge of high pressure somewhere and we were on that end of the storm but northern california was in that actual path of storms at least more often than we were how is el nino currently doing well as showed earlier the anomalies or the departure from normal remain significant in that region as shown here and we're still in a strong phase How about below the ocean water surface? We can see that most of the warm water supply has come to the top, and we can see an extensive area of much cooler than normal water building in the western Pacific and below the El Nino region. So basically, El Nino is starting to fizzle and thin out in terms of the tropical ocean conditions. Not referring to the jet stream, but referring to the tropical ocean conditions. The actual values are shown here, and we can see that it peaked out in December as high as 3.1 Celsius, or just under 6 Fahrenheit. We can see currently it's at 1.7 Celsius, at least at the heart of El Nino, and it continues to slowly decrease, as you would expect this time of year. What's the outlook for the remainder of the month? Well, we do expect a stormy pattern to return basically the last day of March into April 1st and that is why our region here is expected to see above normal precipitation for that short period of time as shown here. How about for the rest of April? Well confidence is not high enough to indicate anything for Southern California but good news again for water supply is there is the probability of above normal precipitation at least the odds are in the favor for it occurring in northern and central California for the month of April. Uh, we use climate forecast models as shown here and some of the information that derives those forecasts comes from here along with trends and analogs of past years. You can see here that the computer forecast models are indicating that central northern California to be above normal in the month of April and in our region you can see there are indications that will be above normal for those short weekly periods in very late March and then in part of early April. What's the spring outlook look like? So similar to the month of April you can see the probability for above normal or a wetter than normal spring exists for central northern California and probability of warm conditions as well so in between storms expect warm conditions and warmer than normal other parts of the country you can see the Pacific Northwest is expected to finally dry out and also be much warmer than normal